Hey, Lanky Cyclist here. Uh, today, I'm gonna give you my review of the Surly Wednesday Fat Tire Bike. So Surly builds this as their all-around trail-oriented fat tire bike. So it sits kind of in between the uh, Surly Pugsley, which is more of a out-and-out -out, uh, touring fat bike, and the Surly Ice Cream Truck, uh, which is their uh, sort of maximum tire size, uh, pure trail-oriented fat bike. Uh, all Surly bikes are steel-framed bikes. Uh, this obviously is no exception. Uh, it is not a lightweight bike at all. This is a size large, uh, and it comes in at probably right around 35 pounds. So if you're looking for a lightweight fat tire bike, this is, this is not it. The geometry on this is, is fairly aggressive. I want to say the trail on it is somewhere right around uh, 94 millimeters. So the Wednesday comes in this blue color, uh, and there is also a grape uh, purplish grape color that has the same build as the blue. Uh, there's also a gray uh, that has a slightly different uh, build. I think the uh, it's a 11 speed uh, versus uh, this which is a, a 12 speed. So I'm going to run through the specs on this bike uh, and then I'll give you my my riding impressions. So if we're talking about a fat tire bike the first thing that we should probably look at are the tires. So the rims this comes with are uh, Surly's own uh, other brother Daryl rims. Um, they do not come, uh, they are tubeless compatible, but they do not come tubeless ready. Uh, I have this bike set up tubeless. Uh, so the tires that this bike runs, uh, the same tire on the front and the rear, these are Surly Nates. They are 3.8 inch tires. So definitely on the smaller end of a fat tire bike, uh, but they do have this uh, a very aggressive tread pattern. Okay, in terms of drivetrain, uh, this runs uh, SRAM uh, Eagle components, uh, but they are the lowest end uh, SRAM Eagle components. So on the front, there is a, a SRAM NX. Uh, it's got a 30 tooth cog on the front. It comes standard one by, but this bike can be set up to run a, uh, a front derailleur. On the back, uh, it comes with a SRAM SX Eagle uh, rear derailleur uh, and also a 12 speed cassette. So uh, it runs from a 11 tooth cog, your little ring, all the way up to a 50 tooth cog. So huge um, gearing ratio, especially given that this thing weighs 35 pounds, having that 50 tooth cog with the 30 on the front uh, makes uh, you know, most hills uh, pretty, pretty easy, to, easy to tackle. In terms of brakes, uh, it comes with uh, Tektro uh, hydraulic disc brakes, 160 millimeter rotors uh, have no no complaints, no issues. They seem to work great. Tons of stopping power. Brakes are great. Other components to talk about on here. So the handlebars are 750 millimeters wide in a large. Uh, I think that's a little bit smaller than the Surly Ice Cream Truck uh, and a little bit bigger than the Pugsley. Uh, pretty wide. Um, again, this is a trail-oriented fat bike. So fairly wide bars uh, gets you in a pretty aggressive uh, position uh, for, for riding. Uh, other things on here are, uh, it comes standard with a, a WTB Volt saddle. Uh, I took that off pretty much immediately. Uh, it comes uh, standard with a 142 millimeter saddle. And I may be the lanky cyclist, but apparently I have wide berthing hips. Uh, so I need a little bit wider saddle on here. So I have this specialized Roman Evo, which is more of a road saddle, but I find that it's been working, working great for me on, on here. But I also found that it was, I don't know, it was a very flat saddle uh, and uh, those don't tend to, to work very well for me. I like a cutout in my saddles, um, but also I found that it was, it was very slick. Like I felt like I was kind of sliding around on the saddle a lot. Not a big fan of that saddle. If you have narrower sit bones than I do, um, or you, know, you kind of like that flat saddle, then maybe that'll work better for you than it did, did for me. Uh, other things, um, this is a rigid fat bike. Uh, I'll get into um, sort of how this bike behaves in different uh, riding conditions, but it does come standard with a rigid steel fork. You can upgrade this to a suspension bike. Uh, I know RockShox makes the Bluto, uh, which is a, a fat tire specific uh, suspension fork. Uh, so if you wanted to convert this into a um, fat bike hardtail, you are able to do that. And the last feature on here, which you can't see on this side of the bike, it's on the other side, but there is a port uh, to run a dropper post. So riding impressions. 
So you need to take everything that I say with a grain of salt. I am not a mountain biker. Uh, I was a road biker for a lot of years. I've kind of gotten more into gravel. Uh, and uh, this is really sort of my first um, bike that I would say is sort of truly oriented more towards uh, mountain biking. Uh, my biggest complaint about this bike, I would say, is the uh, SRAM SX Eagle derailleur that's on the back here. But I feel like there's a lot of times where I shift and I don't get an immediate shift. Uh, I take a couple of pedal strokes and then I'll get a, a delayed shift. Uh, it's pretty frustrating when you're hitting a lot of undulating terrain. I just feel like I can't actually get into the right gear that I need to when I need to get into it. I've kept it pretty clean. Uh, so I feel like it's not really debris that's getting in there. Um, and, and even when I've ridden this on pavement, I've, I've still found that shifting sometimes to be, to be a little slow. So I don't know if that's just a, you know, what you have to deal with with a budget end uh, Eagle derailleur, um, but not, not the biggest fan. So in terms of riding terrain, uh, I have not had an opportunity to get this out on any sort of sand or snow at this point. I hope to do that a little bit later uh, this year, uh, but I have had an opportunity to uh, take this out on a ton of uh, mountain bike trails and also some other dirt uh, kind of tow path, sort of very light, you know, crushed limestone type of, of trails, kind of ridden it on, you know, all those different surfaces. I would say on trails that are um, dirt or sort of loose, light gravel uh, that are very flowy, I mean, look out, like, once you get these fatties rolling, this thing is um, just a, a tank. Uh, and it rolls uh, superbly. Uh, really enjoy sort of those like kind of flowy single tracks. Uh, definitely uh, very well uh, set up for that. Now when it comes to a little bit more um, technical mountain bike terrain, uh, when it comes to roots, these fat tires run tubeless at a low PSI. They just soak up all that root chatter. So really no issues there. Where I have had some trouble with this bike are on mountain bike trails that have uh, some bigger rock formations. Uh, so little rocks here and there don't seem to be an issue. Stream crossings, not a problem. There's a couple of trails around here that have some larger boulder formations uh, that um, you know, maybe have a couple of inch or you know, a couple of feet uh, drop off. And I've had some trouble with uh, burping the tires on this. I run these tubeless generally maybe five to eight PSI, depending on the trail. And so, um, yeah, I have had some trouble where you know, I've burped the air right out of the tire. I think this thing, if, you're, if you really want to make this a, a trail, a pure trail bike, uh, I would say, uh, and you're going to be riding some, some more technical mountain bike terrain, I would say get a suspension fork for this. So in terms of who I would recommend this bike for, uh, I would say that um, this is this is a great all-around bike. Uh, if you're looking for a sort of pure, um, you know, trail-oriented uh, mountain bike that also has fat tires, maybe the ice cream truck would be a better fit for you. If you're looking for a pure touring bike uh, with fat tires on it, then I would say go with the Pugsley. But this is a great, what I would call an N equals two bike. So you got your, you know, your road bike, your uh, gravel bike, whatever it is that you ride sort of all other conditions with, but you want something that can handle sort of the worst elements um, and can also maybe go off road um, a little bit as well. I would say this, this is a, this is a great, a great, great bike. You know, you could pretty much almost make this a whole second bike. Um, if you put a suspension fork on there, you can fit a three inch uh, wide 29ers on here. Uh, so if you put on some, some 29ers, uh, with a suspension fork, I think you would have a pretty nice uh, hardtail mountain bike. Um, but then you can also run up to five and a quarter inch uh, tires on the front. If you drop out the rear wheel in the chain stays to its maximum um, setting, then you can also get uh, 4.6 inch tires here on the rear. If you're regularly touring, this is probably not gonna be the right bike for you. Uh, it's a very aggressive, uh, again, trail oriented bike. Maybe if you uh, put you know, a little bit shorter stem on there, some different handlebars, you can make it work. Um, but if you are somebody like me who occasionally mountain bikes, um, who occasionally wants to ride in the snow, and maybe someday will want to take a bike packing trip, then I feel like this is a, a great, 
great option for you.